Hi everybody. Today's lesson is beginning the last part of the standard, which is worth six credits, um, the electricity standard. Um, this was done um, in two parts. So we did one part on DC and static electricity. We finished that. And now this is the last little bit of your, that's required for your extended examination. And this is called electromagnetism. I have put the PDF version of this on Google Classroom. So hopefully you should be able to find your way through it when we are back in class. I, these books already, these booklets already printed and ready for you. Now today's lesson, I'm just going to go through an introduction to electromagnetism. So first of all, what is electromagnetism? What, what does this whole word mean? So it's actually to study the relationship between an electric current and a magnetic field. Now that brings us to the word magnetic field. So what is a magnetic field? It's the area around a magnet or any other magnetic substance where another magnet or another magnetic material will feel a force. So the word force and fields go together. So when we talk about field, you also need to think of there's a force involved with that field. Okay, so where do we find magnetic fields? I'm going to talk about three places you could find a magnetic field. One is, as the name suggests, you would have a magnetic field around a magnet. There are magnets that come in all sorts of shapes, but I'm just going to draw an ordinary bar magnet. And all magnets, the ends of the magnets are called the poles of the magnet. Now one end is called the North Pole and the other is the South Pole. Now, you have you wondered why they're called North Pole and South Pole? Why are they not just called left and right or P and Q or X and Y? The reason is if you suspend a magnet so that it is free to turn about in whatever direction it wants to, it will eventually come to rest pointing in the north-south direction. That's where we have compasses. Compasses have a little bit of metal which is actually a magnet and that always points to the north. Okay, and the first people to make use of these magnetic compasses were the Chinese. They used it in navigation, so they got thin slithers of uh, the actual magnet. It was called lodestone years and years ago, and they tried, I think, floating it on water, and um, that's how, and they saw that it always pointed in the north-south direction. So the end of the magnet that points to the north is called the North Pole, and the end of the magnet that points to the south is called the South Pole. Now, around this magnet, you have a magnetic field, and we always represent a magnetic field by drawing field lines. Now, the field lines around a bar magnet look like this. Now field lines never cross each other, but they actually kind of end and begin at the magnet. And these field lines have got a direction. So the direction of the field lines is the direction in which a north pole would move. And a north pole would always move towards the south pole because unlike poles attract and like poles repel, okay? If on the other hand, you had two magnets and you had similar poles facing each other, or you could have opposite poles facing each other, then the shapes are a bit different. So let's say north, south, south, north. So you've got similar poles facing each other, north, south, north, south. You've got opposite poles facing each other. So you just need to know what the shape of the magnetic field in this sort of situation would look like. So the, there's going to be repulsion between these two. They don't really like. South doesn't like the south. So you get the field lines. And this one. You've got straight lines to show there's a uniform magnetic field between two opposite poles of a magnet. Let's draw one more set of lines. Here we go. 
and then the arrows so I've got to draw the arrows coming out of the north into the south into the south out of the north so into the south and then goes from north to south and then goes from north to south over here and then out of the north so that's what this looks like okay so that's one place where you have a magnetic field then you also have a magnetic field around the earth because the earth itself behaves like a huge magnet that is why a magnet is used to show you the direction okay because a freely suspended magnet always points north south the north pole of a magnet is the end of the magnet that points to the geographic north pole of the earth and the south pole of a magnet is the end that points to the geographic south pole and the reason why it does so is because there's some sort of force of attraction between opposite poles so if i draw this to represent the earth okay so it's almost like as if there is a big magnet inside the earth and this end is your north pole this is what your geographic north pole is and over here so you've got your equator you've got a southern hemisphere northern hemisphere this is the geographic south pole what i'm writing however because opposite poles attract you have your magnetic north pointing to the geographic south and you have your magnetic south pointing to the geographic north okay so then what are the field lines going to look like so it's the same shape as a bar magnet and then if you get the arrows right so it goes out of the north into the south so into the south out of the north so that's what um, the magnetic field around the earth looks like okay so these two and then you also have this other one so that's what this whole topic is about electromagnetism so if you have a current flowing through a wire there is a magnetic field around that wire it's only when a current is flowing if a current is not flowing then you don't have a magnetic field because a current is a movement of electrons and if the wire is a straight wire then the shape of the field is circular around the wire so if it's a straight wire you've got a circular magnetic field now circle could go clockwise or anti-clockwise so how do you know which way this circle goes so it all depends on the direction of the current okay and current can flow in any one of six directions so it could go up it could go down it could go to the right it could go to the left it could go into the page or it could go out of the page okay so depending which way so you can see what I'm doing you remember this from last year so you use what we call the right hand grip rule okay the thumb points in the direction of the current and your fingers curve in the direction of the magnetic field okay so that's how you do those questions so in this particular one current is going up so my fingers are curving that way so make sure you use your right hand and not your left hand otherwise you get um, get it wrong and the field lines actually they're not evenly spaced outside the wire it's very close when it's close to the wire further apart when they get further away from the wire because the spacing of the field lines is an indication of the strength of the magnetic field okay and then you also learned last year that this magnetic field strength at any point P which is some distance D away from the wire which is carrying a current I is given by B equals K I over D where B is the magnetic field strength measured in Tesla K is a constant and that is 2.0 times 10 to the power of negative 7 Tesla per meter I is your current and D is whatever this perpendicular distance is
okay now wires are not always long and straight you could have if you wanted a very long length of wire the smart thing to do is to wind the wire around and round and round a coil so when you have a coil of wire the current is actually flowing in circles okay so what happens is instead of a long length where this where the magnetic field is circular all these when the wires wound around in a circle these magnetic fields add up and the shape of the magnetic field around a solenoid which is a coil of wire is like that of a bar magnet outside the solenoid but inside the solenoid you have what's called a uniform magnetic field and that's represented by straight lines so I'll just draw a solenoid here it's the last part so solenoid is a coil of wire through which you have a current flowing so here's a solenoid okay and the long, in order for a current, you've got to convert, uh, connect it to some sort of a power source. So that's a positive end, that's a negative. Current flows out of the positive. So if I continue that, it goes down. So here too, I use my right hand grip rule, but because the current is what's in circles, my fingers represent the direction of the current. It's going downwards. My thumb is pointing that side. So wherever my thumb points, that's the north end, okay? And that's the other end. And so the direction of the magnetic field around the solenoid is to, going to go out of the north into the south, out of the north into the south. But because this is a continuous line, Inside the solenoid, yes, the lines are parallel, it's a uniform field, and the directions from south to north, because if you continue the line, it's like going through a room which has got two doors. You come out of one door, come in through one door, go out of the other, you go out of the room and come back. So it's a loop. So when you're in a loop, you're going one direction, one way, and the other direction, the other way, okay? And then suppose you have the scenario and you bring in a magnet close to this. And if you bring a south pole of the magnet here, while this current is going, the south pole, you know, opposite poles attract. So the south pole is going to feel a force and it's going to get attracted. But if on the other end, hand, if instead of a south pole, you had a north pole, and in this case, it's going to feel a force of repulsion. So it's going to feel a force that side. Okay, so this is kind of revision of what you need as a basis of what you learnt in year 11 for year 12. And the task that I would like you to do is first of all, read through this page, this little bit, revision from year 11. And then a couple of pages later, you have this sheet, which is actually year 11 revision. It says magnetic fields and forces. If you can just do, don't do question four, just do questions one, two, and three. You won't be able to do that bit because I have to teach you. And then over the page, there's this thing about magnetic fields in solenoids um, or the effect of a solenoid, what happens. So if you can do these two and I'll work through them, take a photo and upload. Um, so bye for now.